good morning everybody how are you doing welcome back to veggie plot uh, today we're going to be in the greenhouse planting out all the chilies uh, into this new watering system that i'm sort of doing on the cheap <laughs> uh, so i just wanted to show you how i've made it how i put it together how they're actually going to be watered because it's self-watering uh, via wicking system using j cloths uh, but to do that i've got to clear the greenhouse out a bit first so i'm going to get all these things out these are two black beauty aubergines which are coming on nicely uh yeah just gonna clear it all out and then we'll get on these are all the chilies that's a uh, well, quite a few in there, about 14, 17, so a mixture of things. So I'll go through these with you when we're planting them up. There's a whole variety of different things going on here. Right, okay, so this is, you probably can't see it all, but this is basically the system I'm trying to create. I mean, you know online you can get those, I can't say the brand name, can I? They're sort of auto-watering systems where you put pots on the top and they have a reservoir underneath. Well, that's what I'm trying to replicate here um, with the idea of having two big water troughs underneath and this is a sort of a, basically a flower trough which you can buy in any sort of garden center this one's a, a meter long and I've got another one here which is 80 centimeters long I think here in the UK they're they're made by a company called Stuart anyway they're not that expensive um, six to eight pounds something like that so the idea is that I join these two together um, with a connecting hose pipe connector, which I'll show you all in a minute when I take this all apart, I'll show you how it's set up. Uh, so that we have sort of in the big one, in the meter long one, we have 30 liters of water and food. And in the smaller 80 centimeter one, there's 20 liters of water and food. So, you know, this provides a huge reservoir of water and feed for the plants, which means that I don't have to spend every day watering them and also we can go away for long weekends or we can go away for a week or two weeks knowing that the plants are basically going to look after themselves. Uh, this is a great, I mean we've got lovely neighbours who will come in and check things but you know if they had to water all this stuff they go crazy they just say no I'm not doing it. So all they have to do at the moment is turn on the taps, uh, fill up the troughs if they run a bit low and they're done so it takes what five ten minutes so that's one of the main reasons for doing it is I don't have to spend hours watering and neither does anybody else. And the other reason obviously is, well here I've got seven pots and I can have another setup. So I'm gonna have 14 pots here of chilies. And to buy that, that sort of system online will cost you hundreds of pounds. So I wanted to see if there's a way that I can do it much cheaper. Um, it's not much effort to put together and something which will basically save me an awful lot of money. Right, so these pots, I'm not quite sure how much they hold, but I got these for free. Now I appreciate you would have to buy these otherwise, but I think they're floristry pots. So they didn't have a hole in, uh, and I got these from the allotment society where we are. They was, they'd just been given away, somebody had obviously got them and didn't want them. So I got about 14 of these, which I appreciate is an extra cost, and I haven't looked up how much these would be, but um, I don't think they're much because they're quite um, quite thin, not very, very, very tough. Anyway, I've drilled a hole in the bottom, you can see, big hole. And the reason for that is that it's going to sit on this plank of wood which has holes drilled in it. I'll show you all this in a minute. And then we have a bit of plastic pipe which goes through through the hole. And then that sits in the reservoir. And then the wicking fabric goes down this bit of tube. Now I did try some sort of proper felt based wicking fabric but this didn't do the job at all. It hardly transfers the moisture up uh, any height whatsoever. So I had to think of plan B and I'd seen online somewhere that someone had used J cloths. Uh, so I got some J cloths and actually these really really cheap for a pack of 10 or 20 and work really really well. So what it will happen is that we'll pass the J-cloth down through this pipe. Uh, try not to bore you too much me poking J-cloth through a pipe. But anyway, this comes down through the bottom of the pipe. 
and that sticks into the reservoir of water. You can see we've got some little drill holes around the bottom so the water can go in through the side if this pinches it too much in the bottom of the tray. And then this we poke up through the pot like that. So basically the J-cloth at the top goes into the soil and will help. That's where the plant will get its water and feed from. And then the rest of the um, pipe comes out in the bottom into the water trough and then this is what draws up the water here. So that's the idea. And then this all sits on the piece of wood that sits on top of these two reservoirs. So right, should we have a quick look at that? Because that's probably give you a better picture of how it's all going to work. Put that back in there. Right. right, this is the system looking at it from this angle. You can see we've got all seven pots. And then from above you can see we've got a hole in the bottom of each pot. Apart from that one, it's got loads of tubes in. <laughs> we'll take that one off. And you can see the hole underneath. And this corresponds with the diameter of the plastic tube. which just goes through there like that. So if we take all these off, you'll see how this bit of wood is looking. Right, so it's just a simple bit of wood I got from the local uh, timber merchant. Uh, not expensive, it was uh, double the length, so I've cut it in half for both systems. And then you see these holes here, these are for the pots, and this is for a little float system that I've got. You put a bit of tube in and a float, but I'll show you that when I put it back down to put it together. So we just lift this off, you can see underneath. So this is the metre long water trough, this is the 80 centimetre one, and they're joined together via, this is a bit of pipe from a water butt connector, so this is a water butt connector, which has a little bit of silicon sealant around to stop it leaking, and that tightens it and enables the water to flow through from one to the other. So as I say, this is 20 litres, this is 30 litres. It's already got water in and tomato feed. I think the thing I'll change on the next system, because I haven't built it yet for the other chilies, is I'll change the position of this connector pipe. At the moment, as you can see, it's at the top, uh, but actually I think it would be much better at the bottom. And the reason for that is if this trough, say, empties much quicker than this one, then at the moment, because the connector's at the top, no water will flow through from here to here but if the connector pipe were at the bottom <laughs> uh, the water would and feed would just equally flow between the two so that's what i'm going to do in the next one and i'll show you how i do that later uh, you may be wondering what these bits of wire are uh, these are basically just repurposed and bent uh, weed fabric pegs and uh, what they do is they help support the bit of wood which runs the plank of wood which runs across the top but they also keep the uh, trough from bowing out at the tops when it's got all the water in. So it helps keep the troughs in shape, which is particularly relevant for this longer one, the metre long one. Okay, let's put that plank back on top. And uh, I'll put the rest of the pots back on and show you how it all fits together. And then we can get on and plant the chilies. Just using a cheap packet of J-cloths, uh, take it on out, and then all I'm doing is unrolling it, keeping it in the sort of longest uh, dimensions, and just rolling this up just into a sort of a tube sausage shape. And once that's done, just poke that through a bit of pipe. And see like that and some of the holes at the end so that's the bit that shall go in the water and doesn't need to be really long and then this longer bit sticks out of the top which we might double over or do whatever we want to within the pot within the compost okay right I'm going to put this through the bottom of the pot and the idea of this bit of white pipe is to prevents of a soil and so on falling out of the bottom of the pop, pot <laughs> and also to prevent moisture and so on getting onto the wood but you, you probably don't need it to be honest you probably could just use the J cloth straight through into the pot 
So let me put this onto through this hole here and uh, I'll bring you in and show you how it all sort of works. You take the smaller end, put that through the hole, and then a bit of pipe goes through the hole too, and then push that down to the bottom. So you can see that actually there isn't much uh, of the white pipe sticking up into the, the actual um, pot here. It's mainly <laughs> mainly all J cloth. Okay, so we'll just leave that there to soak up water. This is the other one I did. Right, I shall get on and do the others now. And then you can um, see what it looks like when it's all finished. This is the last one, so I've just put that in position. Slide that in there. It's all looking good. Right, I did mention earlier on about the little float system. So what that is, is uh, slightly shorter bits of tube, again with holes in the bottom. And then I've got some, sort of these are fishing floats. <laughs> um, little buoyancy things. So basically you put this into this hole here uh, drop it in and then drop the float in and you can see where the top of the water level is. And you can see just in there the actual float and that should give me a rough idea of whereabouts, you know, nearly is full. So I've got to top it up a little bit more, but if it drops right down to the bottom of that tube, uh, then I'll know that the system needs topping up. Right, I should just do the other one over here. Uh, and then, yeah, nearly time to put the compost in. You don't have to do this, to be honest. I don't think this is you know, make or break for this system. <laughs> you could just look at the water at, at the ends where the pipe, um, the hose goes in. But anyway, so yeah, this is just a little fishing float. I've just got it in the local tackle shop. Anyway, just drop that in there like that. It just floats on top of the water. Right, let's get on and do the rest of them. Right, um, what I've decided to do is just to give the uh, J-cloths a bit of a head start because they actually are feeling damp right at the top, which is great. Um, to help the wicking process, I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of water on them. So uh, yeah, you can see I've just done that one. So just a little splash of water. Just a tiny bit. So I guess I could have um, soaked these beforehand, but I figured that trying to put a wet, soggy uh, J cloth through this pipe would have been a bit difficult. So that's why I've done it this way around. So I'll just make sure they're all getting good soaking. There we go, nice and damp. And what I shall do with the compost, which I've got going on here, um, I shall put some compost in the base first and then sort of layer the J cloth along the top of it so it comes up and around like that. I'll, sh I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute. Right, if we just lay the J cloth up the side of the pot, grab some compost. do is we pull the jay cloth out a bit and just lay it over the top like that. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Tuck that in the other side. There we go. And I could I suppose just have it higher up nearer the roots but I want the actual chili plant to go down, its roots to go down and search for the water. So that's what I shall do for all of these. 
go along and do all of them uh, and then give them all a little water actually to just make sure the compost at the bottom is nice and damp. So that's how they're looking at the moment. So there's pots about a third full with compost with the J-cloth coming through it, just laying on top. But what I want to do is just give them all a little bit of water to start with all this compost because the wicking you know might take a little while to settle in so if I just make sure there's enough water in the bottom of the pots to start with then the chilies should be happy so I don't want to soak them but that gives you an idea for how it's set up at the moment so now I'm going to put a little bit more compost on top uh, just to cover the J-cloth, then I'm going to plant the chilies. Now that's all done, let's get the compost out of the way. Let's go and get the chilies. And here they are. I'll quickly show you what they all are. I've done something different this year. Uh, I know you're supposed to take the tips out of your chilies, but uh, actually the camera's a bit funny, isn't it? Let me tweak you down a bit. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that this year because I particularly like growing some chilies called spaghetti chilies, which if you have a look on my Instagram account, you will see. Last year I didn't have a really great crop from them and I think what it was is because I snipped the tips out to make them bush and in theory get more chilies, they took an awful long time to get going and I didn't end up with many chilies and they ended up ripening really really late and also not so well. So this year I have not trimmed the tips out. <laughs> um, but I've got various different uh, varieties in here. Now these two are uh, Bequino Reds and the reason I'm oh, with a stray tomato in, that's really funny, uh, Bequino Reds um, and the reason I'm growing these is they're really small, if you've seen them in little jars in the supermarket in oil and vinegar and things um, and they're not that hot and you can use them on sort of pizzas and all that sort of thing but they produce masses of lots of little red chilies. So they're Bequino Reds. I did buy some Bequino Yellow Seeds. I think I've got some in here. Yeah, here we go. There's two of those. They look identical, don't they? <laughs> but I do have the label in. These were plants sown on the 6th of March this year. And it looks like I sowed five seeds and I only got two. Now that's what happened with them. And what have we got here? All right, yeah, I, a few years ago, I got some of those big red sweet peppers that you get from the supermarket. I'll try and put a picture in now. Um, and I call them big reds. Anyway, I just saved some seeds from them and I've been growing them ever since and they grow really well. I get some really lovely sweet big peppers off them. And this is one of them. See, we've got flowers on already. Now again, these were sown on the 6th of March. I've got four of those. So I put them in lines in the tray. So there are four of those really big, healthy plants. Uh, but again, I haven't chopped the tips out, been really bad. <laughs> uh, this one is Mad Hatter. Uh, I grew these last year in the Poly Tunnel. Oh, ton poly Tunnel, I'll put a picture up. Uh, but yeah, these are really fun to grow. Not too hot, um, lovely shape, lovely size, uh, and really good for um, eating, stuffing, um, dehydrating, uh, and making into powders and things. Uh, so that's what I did with mine last year. So I've got three of those. These are the Mad Hatters. Put them down there. And then in the middle, these are my favourite. Let me just check. 
Yeah, these are my favourite. These are the spaghetti tillies. I've only got three this year, uh, but you can see they're very tall. I think they, sh they can get really tall apparently. I got these seeds a few years ago from Sea Spring Seeds uh, down at the Eden Project in Cornwall and I've saved seeds ever since. Uh, you can see at the top we've got, I think you can see, we've got flowers coming uh, and they hang down, they're really long, about 30 centimetres, all squiggly, very thin and mild and dry really easily. Uh, really like these, my favourite chilies. So I've got three of those. So I'll we'll have them down there. And then last but not least, I've got five orange pepperoncini. Uh, and these were another thing which I grew last year. Really, really loved these. Oh, snap that leaf, let's take that off. Uh, yeah, but they've got flowers coming as well. So again, I haven't I haven't taken the tips out. They're beginning to split themselves into three branches here and they're also beginning to shoot lower down. So uh, I have high hopes for these, but again, very tasty. Okay, right, that's them. Um, I put the others to one side and we'll get on and start planting. Right, let's see how these look. I've given them all a bit of a water beforehand, so hopefully they're wet enough. But yeah, a few roots in there, so I think that's looking good. I'm just going to plant them sort of at the same depth that they are already at the moment. Just firm the compost in around the root ball. Well, there's good contact with the roots. Made a bit of a mess, so I'm just uh, having a quick sweep up. Just put a little sprinkling on the top, just to settle them in because they are quite wet already. Well, that's all of them in. It's a relief, I can tell you. Uh, they've been hanging around in that tray all together for quite a while, waiting for me to um, to, to pop them on. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, taken a while, but I've been really wanting to show you how the watering system would work. Um, Hopefully it'll work, fingers crossed. I'm presuming the wicking system will work. I did test it for a while, so yeah, hopefully. Anyway, these spaghetti chilies, don't normally let them get this tall, as I said. Uh, I normally cut them off when they're about four sets of leaves uh, high. I take the tips out and that makes them bush out. And then uh, you get more chilies in theory. But I've had sort of problems last year, as I think I mentioned earlier, uh, in with them ripening. So this year I've decided to let them just grow up as tall as they want. Uh, and we've got flowers on already, so I'm just going to leave them. Uh, you can see the little white flowers here. So quite often what I'll do is I'll go around when all the flowers are open and just tap them to release the pollen as well. But these are my sort of favourite chilies so far, out of the ones I've grown. So three spaghetti chilies, two Pequino reds and two Pequino yellows. I've got to make up the other watering system now, so I might do a little video on that if you're interested. Uh, just to show how that's put together, and then I'm going to plant those all out, and then all the chilies and peppers will be done, which is great. Right, that's all that done. Uh, it's a relief, those seven. I say I've got quite a few more to do. Uh, but what I'm going to do is do a video on putting together this watering system. It'll just be me sort of making it and doing a voiceover of how it all works. Uh, so if you're interested in that, that'll be coming up soon. Um, I've also got another little watering system in the back of my mind <laughs> for the two aubergines uh, and that involves a couple of 80 centimetre long trays um, and I'll do a video for that at some point as well. Okay, as always, if you've got something from the video, which I hope you have, I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, please like, subscribe and ring the bell button <laughs> and that'll send you notifications when the next video comes out. Okay, see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.